And speaking of defense partnerships, India is on a mission to expand them. It's easier said than done, though. Most countries know that no India is a buyer of military equipment. So becoming a seller will be tough, which is why India is putting more people on the job. Reports say New Delhi has appointed 15 to 16 new defense attaches. They will be posted in new locations like Poland, Armenia, Tanzania, Djibouti, Ethiopia, Ivory Coast, and the Philippines. But what is a defense attache? And what do they do? Well, usually these attaches are members of the armed forces. They're appointed to foreign missions. And their role depends on which mission they work in. If it's a friendly country, you will have to coordinate military affairs. Maybe iron out defense deals. But if it's an unfriendly nation, things can be shady, like gathering information and even espionage. India's objective is the former, to strike more defense deals. Some of these attaches already work elsewhere, like in the US and Russia. Those missions are well staffed, so the Indian government is rationalizing the appointments. Basically, taking attaches from those countries and placing them in new locations. And this is very important because the global defense market is very competitive. You cannot expect to find buyers easily. You need to build lasting relationships. You must hard sell your product. And for that, attaches are important. We showed you the list of India's target customers. A couple of them were expected, like Armenia and the Philippines. Both countries have bought weapons from India. The Philippines bought the BrahMos missile in 2022. Armenia bought the Pinaka rocket launcher in 2023. So appointing attaches there was key. But beyond that, we can see two trends. One is the focus on Africa. India last sent an attache to Ethiopia in the 1970s. It's been nearly four decades. And now India is sending one again. Same with Djibouti. The new attache is the second officer to be appointed there. And do not forget, Djibouti has a lot of strategic significance. It is located in the Horn of Africa. It also hosts a Chinese overseas base. So having a foothold in Djibouti will be important. Another example is Tanzania. Again, not a random appointment. India is one of the biggest trading partners of this country. Many businesses there are owned by people of Indian origin. So India is not randomly looking at African customers. It is picking the right candidates. Which brings us to the second trend. A defense attache in Europe, specifically in Poland. Now, this is an interesting appointment. On paper, it makes perfect sense. Poland has set aside some $33 billion for defense. That's almost 4% of their GDP. Plus, they are on a spending spree. Warsaw has almost 150 deals lined up this year, 150 defense deals. They have bought air defense systems from the US. They're looking at jets from South Korea and missiles from Britain. So Poland can be a very important customer. Having said that, it's uncharted territory for India. Most European countries buy weapons from the West. So breaking into that market is going to be tough. But India is trying anyway. It's pitching itself as a reliable and cost-effective alternative. And slowly it is working. India's defense exports reached 21,000 crore rupees in the last financial year. That's around $2.6 billion. It's 32% higher than the year before. So exports are clearly rising. But the government's target is much higher. Almost $6 billion by 2029. That's more than double the current exports. And to achieve that, India must do two things. The first is to find new customers, and the second is to sell high-end products, like missiles and fighter jets. Because that's where the real money is. It may sound a bit unsavory, but now is the time to make money in the defense industry. There's a war underway in Europe. There's a conflict brewing in East Asia. So defense deals are on everyone's mind.